So how pay to win is Throne Liberty. Now that the game has been out for about a month and a lot of the server milestones have been unlocked, we have a much better understanding as to how pay to win this game really is. Now, with that said, some of you guys may have seen a recent video that I published in regards to the pay to win, but I want you guys to know that that video was recorded uh, within the first week of launch. So there were definitely things that I have learned since then. Uh, but also more importantly, there have been a lot of milestones that have been reached in the game, increasing the amount of content that we've had access to, essentially increasing the amount of mats that we have access to. And I made this pretty clear throughout this whole segment that regardless of what my thoughts and breakdown was in regards to the pay to win at the time, it really didn't matter because we needed to see all of the milestones reached to really gauge what the end game was actually going to be like. And, and I admit there were certainly some things that I definitely missed at that time, but I mean, to be fair, it was literally within the first week of the game. And, and there's no way I'm going to sit here and tell you that I knew everything there was to know about the game within the first week. Uh, I, I feel like I was pretty clear throughout the whole, whole ordeal that we were still learning and there were still content or, or milestones to be reached. So I do apologize if there was a little bit of misinformation slash misdirection, but I do want to be clear that that video is outdated and this is the video that you want to see. I can't take that video down, however, because there is a sponsor in that video and, and I just have to leave it up. So if anyone is, if anyone asks or reacts or whatever, just let them know that this is the update to the video and that was recorded well before anyone pretty much knew anything in regards to the game. I know it was published like two weeks prior, but it was recorded, I believe, like within the first week. Okay, so we're just going to get right into this, man. And uh, I'm going to try and be as straight to the point as possible. I'm going to go ahead and open the cash up here. In Throne Liberty, you have two currencies. You have Lucent and you have Solent. If I were to insert my opinion right now, I would say it's a lot like Solent is a lot like Silver in Lost Ark and Lucent is a lot like Gold in Lost Ark. You can purchase gold with money. Well, you technically purchase Royal Crystals, but you're essentially buying gold and you use that gold to purchase goods on the on the uh, on the auction house. So in Throne Liberty, Lucent is a farmable farmable currency, and the way you farm this currency is by uh, farming uh, items like any any war any item gear drop that you get uh, in the open world you can sell and you can see which items are sellable based off of this icon right here let me pull this up this icon right here it means it's tradable okay Th this is not tradable right so there are certain items that are tradable certain items that aren't but general rule of thumb tldr if you Farm the item in the open world, you kill a mob, and it drops this weapon, then you can sell it uh, on the auction house. The other way to sell things on the auction house is to extract traits, which we're going to talk about later. So there's a trait right here, max health. If I were to extract this trait right here, uh, if I were to extract this trait right here, it's going to consume this mat, this mat right here. You can purchase in game with Solent. And I'm going to get this item. This item right here, I can then sell on the auction house and get a lot of Solent. This, or excuse me, uh, Lucent. This, by the way, is probably one of the best ways to farm um, Lucent. You're going to do a lot of dungeons and these dungeons. Uh, will might drop you a best in slot weapon or a gear piece that has the best in slot trait and then you sell the trait i'm going to talk a little bit about the traits because they are relevant to the pay to win uh but just know that this is another way to farm lucent other than that lucent is the premium currency that you can simply purchase down here you can see 100 korean which is about like 70 80 usd but like if this goes if this when this goes to the west this will be like a hundred dollars or 3600 plus 540 lucent lucent guys you can use to essentially buy every single thing including upgrade mats outside of one thing which i will tell you here in a second but um you could obviously buy base level gear in the auction house and you could also purchase these um these these recipe mats this is this is whatever but it, it's this this is like kind of like the big one here these are the main ingredients to craft upgrade mats for example, in order to enhance my, uh, let's say, my weapon here, this is going to require these growth stones. And in, in order to get these growth stones, I can either play the game or I can simply, 
uh, craft these uh, right here. Uh, actually, I can I'll use the weapon one. Here's the weapon one. This is I can upgrade these from the greens or I can simply purchase or craft these by having rare magic powders or rubrics. OK, rare magic powder or rub blue powder and blue rubrics. I can purchase the rubrics in the marketplace, obviously, and I can also purchase the powder by just simply dissolve purchasing any item in the auction house and dissolving. You can see right here, if I dissolve this, I'm going to get this. So um, when it comes to gear enhancing, you can absolutely swipe and pay to win to enhance, uh, to, to speed up your progression here. And you're going to also notice everything you do requires Solent, whether it's dissolving, whether it's enhancing your gear, everything just requires Solent. And the Solent used to be a bottleneck. But after implementing these new events that give you a lot of precious, uh, precious Marins like this mat right here, uh, the Solent bottleneck has become non-existent because now you can now realistically swipe for a lot of Solent. All I would have to do is purchase this Marin here. And as you can see, if I vendor this, it will sell for 432k and... I could just do that indefinitely before these were nowhere near as available. So the amount of Solent that was required to continue upgrading your gear versus the amount of Solent that you could swipe or farm, th there was definitely a bottleneck with the Solent. But in the current state of the game and moving forward, it looks like there will be no bottleneck here. These are already in the game and they're going to continue to be in the game and you can swipe for them. So what is it that you can't swipe for in regards to the upgrades? Well, when you're upgrading your skill books right here, or when you're upgrading your skills, you need these skill books. And in order to uh, in order to craft these skill books, you're going to notice that you need Marins, which are purchasable, and you need these parchments. These parchments are the only items in the game that are unobtainable through swiping. You actually have to purchase or excuse me, play the game to to farm these. To my understanding, I'm fairly certain unless they implement this later on, uh, you, you can't buy these. You have to farm these. So that's that's pretty much it. Every, everything else in this game, when it comes to upgrading your gear and whatnot, you could absolutely uh, swipe to, um, to, to, to speed up your progression. So outside of the parchments, everything else, you can absolutely pay to win. You can absolutely swipe. I don't think anyone is disputing whether or not this game is pay to win or not. It's all about how big the gaps are. That That is pretty much the main point of discussion when it comes to this game, because systematically, this game is 100% pay to win. So, Canon, you said that the game really isn't that bad when it comes to pay to win. What do you mean? Systematically, this looks as pay to win as it gets. Yes, it is, but just... Just so you know, a little bit of context there. Every game outside of like Guild Wars 2 and Final Fantasy 14 is systematically paid to win. Just, just to be, just, just to be clear here. Now, I'm not defending this uh, pay to win system. It's 100% pay to win. I'm, a, I'm also not the biggest fan. But if you want to understand the full scope of how significant the pay to win is in this game, uh, I think you should understand the gearing process in the end game gearing loop. Um, for those of you who care. So it's pretty simple when it comes to the gear enhancing here. You have two weapons and then you've got these armor pieces. Okay, you start from you start from white, you go up to green, green goes to blue, blue then goes to purple. Purple is currently best in slot, plus nine is the highest. Like my weapon already is the highest, and there are free-to-play players that have already hit plus nine. Like when you hit plus nine, there's nowhere to go after. Are they going to uh, are they going to increase this cap and add legendary or add it or increase the plus nine to plus twelve? Uh, yes, I don't know if they're going to increase the plus nine to plus twelve, but I, I do know that people have data mined legendary being in the game. But vertical progression should should always be continued, right? As of now, there is a cap, and this cap to your gear upgrades are relatively low. There's there's factor number one as to why the gaps between a whale and a free-to-play player doesn't seem to be that big. There are also a lot of free-to-play players that are able to reach a plus nine purple weapon. Now, I want to say a lot, but a good bit of free-to-play players that can hit a plus nine weapon simply because you don't have to plus nine purple all of your gear. What do you mean by that? How, how are you going to be in blue gear and beat a whale that's in, in purple gear? That's not a good argument, Kenan. Well, you have to understand 
uh, the gearing process again. So when it comes to the enhancing process in this game, that's that's the that's the level. It's essentially green to blue to purple, purple being the highest, and you feed the blue gear into the uh, purple gear. So when I feed the, these plus nine daggers, which is the max at blue, into the next uh, purple dagger that I that I get, then uh, the purple dagger starts at plus six, and then I just need to go seven, eight, nine all the way through. And I do have purple daggers right here. In fact, I have best in slot purple daggers right here. These daggers right here is the best. These are the best daggers in the game, which by the way, these daggers specifically, you cannot purchase these daggers. You need to get in a dungeon. Okay. So let's go over this when it, let's first talk about the base level gear and how trading works, because this is going to be the one thing you have to understand as to why the gaps between a whale and a free-to-play player isn't that significant. And the reason why I've said in my previous video that it, it, the pay-to-win really isn't that bad, despite having a system that is 100% pay-to-win, pay to win, right? So I'm trying my best to, to articulate this in a way that is easy to understand. First and foremost, the best, best in slot gear is absolutely purple gear, okay? Amongst the best in slot gear, there are some items that need to be farmed in a dungeon, like for example, these daggers, and there's some items that need to be farmed uh, through the open world, which can be tradable, which is tradable, and you can purchase them in the auction house. Okay. Now, number one, when it comes to these best in slot items, these items are not readily available. As you can see, if we go to my greatsword, which is best in slot, which I got through my my guild, by the way, which is the single-handedly the best way to actually get best in slot gear, by the way, is through your through your guild. Uh, if they're not in a dungeon, you can see that recently sold there have only been six. Okay, these items do not get listed very often, and I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, it doesn't matter. They will eventually get listed, and then bam, you got the best in slot weapon. Yes, you have the best in slot base weapon. But again, you need to understand the upgrading system. The upgrading system, when it comes to your actual character power, not only lies in the grade of the weapon, which you could absolutely swipe for the growth stones and get it to plus nine for sure, but the real power comes from these traits that you see. When you get this base level weapon, you don't get the traits. You get one trait and you need to unlock the other two. And if you look at my current Morakai sword, you're going to see that each trait, stun chance and melee critical hit, has four levels to it. And I have level one for each one. First of all, this might be a little bit confusing, but in order to unlock a brand new trait, so you see I have stun chance, melee, crit, and for me to unlock that locked uh, grayed out uh, text right there, right above, right above where it says blessing 80. In order for me to get that, I need to get another Morakai sword or an extracted trait from Morakai sword, which is right here. And then I got to wait for the trait that I want. And the traits that you want is the true end game loop. Now, the issue with this is that currently up for the first month, and this is why I kept saying for the first month, it's really not that bad is these items just don't get listed. I've been sitting on this Morakai Corrupt Sword with one trait for the longest time, and I very and I just recently got melee critical hit. And I have to upgrade the melee critical hit an additional three more times. And that's a lot. I don't need another Morakai sword specifically once I get that first melee critical hit. However, I still need to essentially get three Morakai swords of a specific trait because each each sword is will have an rng trait you can see right here here are the traits i want melee hit melee critical hit and i want melee heavy attack so i need to wait for a melee heavy attack critical hit and melee hit to be listed on the auction house in order to buy and that shit just doesn't get listed so what does that mean what does that mean well what that means is in order to truly perform at the with with the most amount of power you need to build out a set that is fully traded out. As you can see, these Dark Destruction Gloves, I have all three traits. This Elite Gladiator's Cloak, Cloak, don't judge me for the traits, I'm theory crafting some stuff for those of you guys who actually play. I have fully maxed out traits. Now, this can certainly be pay to win. All I gotta do is go to the auction house and purchase these blue traits, which are significantly cheaper and lucent, and 
trade out my gear, bam, pay to win, yes. However, the gap between a free-to-play player and a pay-to-win player is really not that big because a free-to-play player, by the way, that's been committed playing for this for this past month is going to be at least in full blues, fully traded out. Guilds are the ones that are actually farming this. You can see in our guild inventory right now, our distribution, we got a destroyer choker. This is the best in slot necklace for us. This is not listed on the auction house. We've got this stagger. We've got this uh, this this uh, sword shield from this world boss. A lot of these rare items, most of them are actually being farmed by the guilds. Now, of course, they will eventually be listed. And that is the reason why I'm saying that in the future when everything's listed or when uh, when everyone has their gear and, and a lot of people have these items that they're starting to sell now, yeah, it's de it's definitely going to, going to be more pay to win. I am expecting this game six months down the line to be significantly more pay to win than it is for the first month. So by me saying that in the first month this game isn't bad, the gaps aren't bad, and it's not that pay to it's not the pay to win isn't that bad. That's what I'm talking about. There is simply no listing. There, there's not enough listings for you to actually get a full set of purples, which is what you'd whale out for um with full traits it's very difficult to do so right some I, like this item right here is a dungeon item you can't even buy this item and that's the reason why i have it fully traded because it's easier to act it's more accessible because they're more prevalent on the marketplace and the reason why they are is because they're actually um they're actually farmable in the dungeon so you're gonna see the purple gear that's best in slot that is farmable in the dungeon, those are accessible, which by the way, they're also accessible for free to play players because you can literally farm it in the game. Okay, so let's just break this down real quick. Okay, this game systematically 100% pay to win. However, the pay to win isn't quote unquote bad right now in its current state simply because of the way the gearing is designed and the emphasis on trades and the availability of these best in slot slash purple items on the marketplace. You need repeats of your of of that best in slot purple item in order to fully trade it and unless you fully trade it which is extremely difficult to do some items it's impossible you are not going to be performing at the level of someone in full blues that are fully traded out and a free-to-play play anyone can get full blues fully traded out plus some of the best items you literally cannot actually purchase uh its base form in the in the auction house you have to get them through a dungeon so that is pretty much the whole shebang when it comes to the pay to win. Again, I apologize if this was kind of a scuffed delivery. There isn't too much editing with this video and it's been an extremely long day. It's 8.45 in the morning. I haven't slept all day. So hopefully, hopefully this made sense. But uh, this is really the only time that I have to edit this week and, and upload this video. And I really wanted to upload this video uh, before I got too busy. So. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below if you found this helpful of course please hit that like button and hit that subscribe button it really helps the channel follow me on twitch i'm streaming this game almost every single day if you are interested and i'll see you in the next video